Oh, baby, here we go. <laughs> the Joan Jet to my blondie, the, the Wayne to my Garth. Oh, I did get that right. I thought I was going to invert that. Yeah. You would be Wayne. I will be Garth. Exactly. You know, yeah. you've got the dark hair. I've got the blonde hair. We can do the, exactly. the hair back. <laughs> Paige is joining me. Bud, how are you? Good. First of all, finally. Finally. I'm like, listen, like what that? No, this is fine. I'm really excited to be part of it. As soon as you text me, I text it back straight away, you guys. Like instantly. Yeah. I was like driving from coffee and I'm like, oh, I am being reckless right now, but I'm so excited. <laughs> but yeah, so please don't do that at home. I'm not going to do it. That, but. Don't do, do it, but like, Renee, you get it. it's pretty dangerous life to live because you do get very excited about texting her back. But yeah. Though like, you are in general, a quick texture backer, I would say. Yeah. I mean, well, only to some people. Okay. Yeah. So if it, I mean, if you do get a quick text back, you know that you're in my, my circle. We're in the circle. That I genuinely like. <laughs> <laughs> so if I, if I I apologize to anyone that's actually watching this and being like, this doesn't text me back for like a good couple no, of hours. You know what? It's they should know. Personal. They need yeah. to know. They need to know where they stand and it's okay. It's <laughs> nothing like, I would say it's nothing personal, but that's actually incredibly personal. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it really is. It's like the most personal you can get. It's like a MySpace top eight that you have yeah. to do. And they're just like very low on that list. You oh know? my God. Who did you have in your My MySpace top eight? Did you have like real people Ooh. or did you have like bands and stuff? No, I, I had real people. I can't remember any of my friend's name. That's how special they are. <laughs> Even my family wasn't in my top eight, but I feel like I, I seriously can't remember, but as soon as I get mad at a friend, I'm like, do, 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 not you're today, down the but list. Yeah. yeah. Or even when you had like the top, you're like fave five on your phone or whatever. Mm -hmm. I don't know. The old it's, speed dial. Back yeah. in the day. Slippery yeah. slope. Mine's just like yeah. John and then like family members, mm -hmm. whatever. Oh, there's also this new iPhone thing where you can put like the important people like right at the top and like a big, have you done that? Oh, no. Yeah, so mine literally is just runny, obviously, because I'm just like, my, my family's on, on WhatsApp, so I don't really need to. But like, yeah, so he's just like this big circle at the top of all my messages. And then I was like, you know what? I might upgrade Renee to that because- I should be upgraded to that. You should, you should, honestly. 100%. I told everyone, I don't care about a lot of people, but Renee is on my, is on my, is on my list. Yes, upgrade solid, me, solid put people. me in that big yeah. bubble. <laughs> Give me that. Welcome to Ronnie's club. Yeah. Yes. Me and Ronnie, the double R club. Let's, yeah, that's let's right. rage. I'm ready <laughs> to go. Um, isn't it really crazy to look back at like this past year and like, just like it even like, especially like for you, I wouldn't even say like the last year, the last like five years for you to look at like being on the road. I mean, a million other things that happened throughout life to now we're just like at home on Zoom. You're like the queen of <laughs> Twitch. We never have to leave our houses anymore. Like what the hell happened? Dude, I think it's a good thing because when I was just out and the world was open, there was just a whole lot of trouble happening. You know what I mean, first of all, I, I mean, to be fair, the past couple of years before the pandemic, I did start, stop drinking. And mm -hmm. then I've been drug free for over three years and yes. I've not been drinking for like over two which is really, really cool. And then also I, I completely cut all meat and dairy out of my own thing, but I'm not one of those crazy vegans where they're just like, you have to be vegan. If not, you're going to go to hell. Right. So I'm just like, I love animals, but it's not about that. I just, I'm so addicted to being healthy now and feeling good and having my skin look good. And just like, and the fact that I haven't worn foundation only that one time that we came to backstage, yeah. I was like, what a dream. My it's skin can breathe. Yeah. You know how synced up you and I are? You just literally said what I had written down for like my first thing I wanted to talk to you about. <laughs> oh, really? Like you literally just sorry. rattled it all off of like. Never mind. Sorry. Yeah. No, it's great. What are talk about now. That's all right. We have to end this already. Yeah. That, I, thank you for joining me on the show. <laughs> this has been really great. Um, follow yeah. her on Instagram and Twitter and Twitch. Yeah. Thank you. Um, but okay. So what, what kind of sparked it all for you to stop using anything no drugs no alcohol to really just like tighten that ship up honestly so the drugs thing just came just kind of happened when I started coming back to uh when I got the call that I can go back to WWE because that kind of like lifted my spirits a lot and I was like damn well I don't want to fuck up anymore like that's literally it. I was like I don't want to fuck up and then seeing this girl this little girl randomly at a grocery store too and I looked like 
doo doo, right? I had like a big mat on my head because I wasn't taking care of myself and I was really, really skinny. And it was just like, it was really, really bad time and stuff. But she looked at me like I was this superhero, like I was like Wonder Woman or something, you know? And uh, obviously she doesn't read social media. So she doesn't see like, you know, me in like the dirt sheets or the headlines or whatever. Like, and so like she just was so happy to see me and she was like, I want to be like you one day and stuff. And I was just like, oh my God, like, and it really is like an awakening moment. You're just like, there's so many girls and boys out there that just are looking up to us, like to be guided, like to be a role model. And I'm not, I'm not saying I'm the perfect role model because I'm not, but I feel like people look up to me because I've messed up so many times and fought back afterwards. And now I'm on like a good positive journey, which is wonderful. I mean, obviously like I know you so well, so I know all the ins and outs of all the things that you've been through and it, it has been so publicly documented for you that like, oh my God, there's no. no way for you to escape that except to just like face mm-hmm. it head on. That's gotta be incredibly difficult. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Super difficult. Super. Cause people, even though a lot of people have my back now, which is really wonderful, like a, a huge amount of people have my back and it's really surprising anytime someone like says or does something like really rude or, or mean or whatever to me. I do have a lot of people that come to my defense, but like there is still people out there that like to go out of the way to say the, the meanest, rudest stuff to me. Like even on Twitch, like I opened up my chat to follower only instead of subscriber only. And obviously you get, yeah, there's, I have a good, a wonderful mod squad, which is good. Like they literally monitoring everything, like deleting anyone who says something rude, but still there's always one that comes in and like mentions like, you know, a video or something like that. And just, it's just, and it, I'm, I would be lying if I didn't say like offended, or really hurt my feelings. Like I, I would be like, it bums me out. But at the same time, I've got to a stage in my life where it doesn't like completely destroy me anymore. I'm just like, whatever. I was like, people are never going to stop doing that. It is what it is, but there's going to be less and less people doing it, which is really wonderful. Well, you know, even looking at like, like somebody like Chrissy Teigen, who just recently Mm -hmm. quit Twitter, she's made so much of her success off of being on Twitter and being this open book and being vulnerable. But she's like, you can only absorb so many of those hits from an account that's followed by two people without starting to feel these like deep internal bruises that it's just it's it's not self-serving anymore well people be so negative people are always like well you should expect that because of the business like no we should never expect that at all no people should not go out of their way like i would never in my life it doesn't matter who you are it doesn't matter like if you have two followers or freaking millions of followers, I would never go on someone's post and be like, you're ugly or you're this or you're that. I'm yeah. just like, you must be the most terrible person to be around. Like there, there must be some deep rooted issues that you're taking out on us. Like it's, it's like, I, at some point I feel like kind of bad for these people, but at the same time, I'm just like, what, like, what makes you think this way? Like, I, yeah. I will never understand. I wouldn't, I would never do that ever. I, it's just... I had something like that recently where this person keeps, uh, you know, they just when you get like tagged in things over and over, yeah. like, you want to reach out and be like, hey, like, are you okay? Yeah, like, yeah exactly. You need, like, like this, it's a, it sucks. It sucks that people feel that way, but it's also like that, that age old thing of like, oh, it's just somebody looking for attention. And then you do reach out to them and they're like, oh, just kidding. I'm a huge fan. I love you. But it's like, why exactly. do we do the negative horrifying things to just try to like seek someone's attention? It's, it's wild. Exactly. And people don't realize like, yes, that they made you see one person and then you get the comments and they being like, don't, just don't respond to these people. But you're like, is that's not just one person though. That, yeah. That's the one person that kind of just tipped it off where I was just really freaking mad because we get hundreds of them. And daily, they can maybe be even so thousands. loud. Oh yeah. And just freaking cruel to you for no mm-hmm. reason. I'm like, you're being so mean to me and I have no idea who you are. Yeah. Like I have no idea. We, we would never have met in person or anything. We're not in a friend's that you just mean to me and I'm a complete stranger to you. Yeah. And that just like blows my mind all the time. I'm like, you're obviously aware of who we are, but you're, but honestly, it really does stem from jealousy. Cause I feel like they, we have what some of these people want. Right. And it's not, and it's not like, I always think like that. I'm just like, they're just jealous or they're, or they have like issues at home and we remind them of whatever it's, it's whatever, but True. I'm just like, but they just don't understand that their one comment is just amongst hundreds of thousands. Like we get daily and it's yeah. just like, we're just going to take it out on you because now you're like the last straw kind of thing. And it's also the, like the preconceived mm-hmm. notion that this person has of you based off of what they've seen on TV or what they've seen oh, here yeah. and there, as opposed to like, obviously they don't know you on a personal level. So it's like, I bet you if we hung out, 
you might like me. <laughs> For real, like people will look at wrestling and I say this all the time. I would never go into a movie and be like, mm, like, for example, with Sylvester Stallone, we we're just talking about, and he's playing the bad guy. I'm not gonna walk out and be like, oh, I hate Sylvester Stallone. And like, I'm just gonna tweet him for being a piece of yeah. because he's playing a character. You'd yes. be like, oh my gosh, he played this character so well. Like, I get it when you're at the show, boo, scream, do whatever. But when we're outside the ring, like, don't treat us like crap. Totally. Like, there's no, there's literally no need for that. If for anybody, not just wrestlers, but in general, like, stop being mean to people. Like, what is wrong well, with it's like, you? I mean, this is super dark but i mean you look at um that girl hannah from shimmer that was on that reality show yeah. um mm -hmm. uh the terrace is that what it's called the terrace terrace something like that that was on netflix yeah. and she's on there playing like a heel character and i mean it led to her suicide yeah and you, that breaks people my heart, dude. it yeah. is i mean it's just it's i mean you and i have been talking right after that happened because you can't yeah. watch that and not absorb that in some capacity, obviously, I mean, she's a human being. I met her like very briefly in passing and it's yeah. like, man, you just don't understand the weight of words. And people are like, oh, it's just words. Just someone saying something to you, but it's like, like right, no, damn, I would rather get punched in the face. Honestly, I'm like, punch yes. me in the face, but stop saying these things to me. Like, you know what I mean? Cause like you can only, your body being a human, you can only take so much. Yes. And they think because we're at a certain level and like, I can't imagine the Kardashians, what the, the crap that they get. Oh my right? God. I'm just like these poor women and like just men, everybody, everyone just getting all this crap literally for no reason, apart from just being in the public guy. And it makes me so sad for everyone. And they think that we're not human, right? They're just like, they're, like, they're fine. It like discredits their work. I mean, you look at somebody like the Kardashians and I get it. People are like, yeah. oh, they're just famous for fa for being famous and famous for yeah. like whatever reason. But it's like, man, you cannot deny that empire that they have built. Yeah. And have you, you want to yeah. just throw stones at like the hard work. Like what they're doing is no easy task. No, it's not. Dude, just doing reality shows. We've both been on there. It is exhausting. It is taxing. You're mm -hmm. spending all day and night in front of a camera. And I don't care what people say. They're just like, well, you're not freaking running around to do it. No, it's exhausting to be yes. on a hundred at all times. And then you're being pulled one way and told another. And then you don't know what the producers have in store for you mm -hmm. because there could be random drama that you have no idea about. You know what I mean? Like, it's just... It's all over the place at all times. And then you get the people who I say the reality fans are a lot different from wrestling fans because the reality fans look at you like they've known you forever as right. well. They so really welcome you, in the you into their house like as mm -hmm. a person. But it's also yeah. that vulnerability that comes from being on a reality show because even mm -hmm. in moments like when you're on and like you know you're like kind of going through doing a scene or whatever, but there are those moments that you become very unguarded and those are very scary to have a camera in your face during those moments. Oh, 1000%. Yeah, when you're doing like the crying stuff, <laughs> I I do not feel like crying in front of people. Like I hate it. Like I, that's what I, feel. obviously I feel like everyone has that feeling though. Seeing you cry is horrible. Oh, it's horrible. horrible. Yeah. So like having a camera in your face while you're doing this and I'm like, you're trying not to be distracted by, by the fact that you have like, two or three crews around you at all times. And you're just like trying to have this heart to heart. It's really hard. Well, remember you and I had to do that. Remember like yeah. you and I got coffee, like right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. And you like, you were, my, you were my first iced coffee, sis. Just let <laughs> me know. You were my first iced coffee. Was that now here we are. Yeah. All of the yeah. iced coffees. This is my like mm -hmm. third of the day. Decaf, everybody <laughs> calm down. Yeah, um, relax internet. Here comes Twitter about to I cancel, know. you know. Oh my God, too much coffee. Are you calling child services? <laughs> <laughs> my baby's just like vibrating. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but okay, so all that crap aside, now mm -hmm. here you are, you're in yeah. such a great space. You, yeah. I mean, like you just said, like kind of cleaned everything up. How do you feel physically, Dude. mentally? I get chills, like, honestly, I got chills thinking about it. And it's really weird that I got chills. I just like, it just feels good to be like really happy and not having anyone mess with you. Like I have a, like, you know, a, a wonderful boyfriend. He treats me really wonderfully and, and always encourages me to be better, you know, and that's really cool. And then he's the reason why I went plant-based and like stop vaping. I was a huge vapor and he was like, we look stupid vaping. And I was like, you're right. It so we ended up quitting vaping and he, me and him, uh, stop drinking together too which is like you need a good support system like that yeah but also like i love my dog is he in it? he's laying behind me right Monster. now he's getting, but being close to the beach is also wonderful too like this pale gob like loves the beach and you like, have a bit of a tan right now 
I do. You know what? I did lay out and I got a little bit burnt. Girl, oh, oh look at that. Time. A little tan line. Okay. A little tan line. And then, I, I, you know what? I have Native American and Spanish in me. So don't worry, guys. I will go a wonderful brown tan color, which I'm very you. excited about. Yeah, everyone's always like, oh my gosh, you're gonna die because you're so pale. And I'm like, no, 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 my heritage, I'm good. <laughs> like, I swear, I just get a little burnt and then like, we're good. We're, we're off to the races. Um, but yeah, like, it feels good to like, I feel like even though I'm still in WWE, like I still, I feel like my own boss at this point because you know, I do have Twitch and I'm doing this other thing that obviously you're aware of, but no one else is. But, right. Well, I'm working on brother, Kayfay brother, but I'm really excited. You know, we like I've been in a lot of meetings and all this kind of fun stuff, and it just feels good to be able to create something so wonderful with like minor people and stuff, and being able to share it with you. And I can't wait to share share it eventually with with everybody. But yeah. on a side note, I'm also doing a book as well, which I'm really excited about. Oh, I like, didn't know yeah. you were doing a book. Yes, I, I, well, I told you one of my New Year's resolutions. Remember I said I was like maybe going to make a book. Did I tell yeah, you that? I think you did, yeah. Yeah, but yeah, so like I've been writing down notes and stuff for that because I'm like, I feel good writing it all down and stuff like that, you know, just getting everything out on paper and it just, it feels nice and it just feels like a lot of, I just, I just feel in a wonderful space to do it. It's about time, you know? Is it like a diary entry style or are you like going through like stories where taking things all the way back to Norwich, England? back to North England growing up and everything like I even making a two book kind of series I'm like I have so many stories it's crazy like stories that will shock so many people you know and what I thought was like is normal isn't normal to like the average family you know what I mean and like just people in general so um but it's, it's not bad I'm like making it sound like I said it's terrible but it's I've no, just experienced a lot of things and like we just said earlier it's like you have lived a life at 29 more than yeah. like you know more than most full-grown adults can say that they've already done I mean you have seen so many things so I mean yeah. you know actually when we were talking last week uh and kind of hearing that perspective uh the other person that was in on our call for that yeah so many secrets in this so many secrets. um said something that really like struck a chord of talking about like just how you grew up I mean you're you come from a family of wrestlers uh yeah. your, your dad was involved in the the wacky crazy things that he was involved in your mom's doing yeah. her thing to just like your whole family base to to looking at where you are I, I guess the line that he used was saying like it was hard for you to tell the difference between like what was reality what was yeah what was true uh, what yeah. was right and wrong? Like, is that is that something that really kind of holds true for you? Yeah, like now, like I feel like I'm fully aware of like everything in my surroundings and stuff like that. But growing up, yeah, I didn't know what was like exactly right and what was wrong and stuff like that. You know, not to like a really bad way of knowing. I, I'm very aware of what's wrong, wrong. You know what I mean? But like, sure. just like the simple things in life and just you know, again, yeah, reality to like what's real and what's not and stuff like that. It's just because of just all the experiences that I've been through in my life, which is, they're just so bonkers that I, like, again, I tell my friends, uh, there's this couple that I've known since I've like moved over here, Joey and Raquel. I've told them stories before and they're just like, what? And they <laughs> seem not true. Such, yeah, it's like, they're like, what? Because Raquel grew up in like, you know, this sheltered family life you know where she hasn't even seen the rocky movies or the mask or wow. you know all the classics you know what i mean and i'm just <laughs> like mask. where have you been? you're an alien to me what are you talking about and like uh and joey grew up like as as an early child and stuff so what the me to, and obviously just being here in america and me just growing up in like you know not the most richest of places in england just telling them stories i just like what and they even tell him ronnie and ronnie's been through crazy in his mm -hmm. life too and he's just like that's crazy you know it's just it's such a I can't I want to tell you so much but I also want to save a lot for the book too so save it for like, the book I mean there's yeah. so many stories that I think pe like the public knows the surface level of you yeah. know a plethora of the stories but for you to like yeah. really dive into like the meat and potatoes of what those stories are and how those situations kind of happened people yeah. will I mean yeah it's, yeah it's crazy 
There's already a story out there, like, which was actually in Daniel Bryan's book of like him walking in and my dad and my brother is dangling a guy out of uh, like, I think it's a four or five story window. He like walks in and he's just like, okay, walks back out again, you know? And I remember being there because I was super young and sitting outside the locker room waiting for my parents to get changed and cut and come out. And yeah, it's, it's just really funny. He was just like, this is crazy. But I saw that kind of stuff growing up. And I yeah. thought that was like, it, it was not like, oh, you're dangling someone out the window, for, window because you know, like the, what the guy did was was not nice and, and horrendous. So like I understood, but I'm like, maybe not dangling a guy at the window was the best option. It was we extreme. We could have like, you know, yeah, it was a little extreme, but it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, so growing up in Norwich, England, yeah. what paint like a little picture for us of what Norwich is like. Oh my gosh, Norwich is beautiful. First of all, Norwich is a city, but also it's a university town too. Ah. Um, but it has, so what we say there's, a, uh, what was it, a pub for every day of the year and a church for every month of the year in Norwich. Perfect. So it's like, it's good, you know, you can get pissed up and then you can go to church and it's on every corner, it's great. Full circle. Um, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, but Norwich, Norwich is wonderful. I, I loved Norwich growing up. I just think it's absolutely beautiful. It's a city mixed with country as well, which is really weird. It's just kind of like has that in between. How um, far is it from London? A couple hours? Two and a half hours. Two and a half hours. Yeah. 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 But I literally, like, I, I love it so much. And just growing up where everyone knew my family's name outside of wrestling too, because my dad had this huge reputation. His nickname was Paddy the Bat growing up. And <laughs> he was like, he worked on doors. He was a football hoogan. He was a movie. He did like just everything. And then, you know, my brother kind of followed, my brother Roy kind of followed in his footsteps a little bit. So even now, if I go back to Norwich, I'm only known as Roy's sister or Paddy's daughter. Like I literally <laughs> still don't have a name for myself. Even if I create like this, you know, yeah. career, I'm just, I'm still like classes, you know, because they're just, they're respected, but people are also scared. It's like the Sopranos. They're literally like the Sopranos. <laughs> Like people would think they're so much into the mob that uh, the pubs that we lived in, because I would work in pubs and stuff like that when I was like 14, 15, like that's just how we were. Like, and I'd be pulling pints and stuff. And then we get raided by the police because they think that my dad is like some leader of the mafioso or whatever. Oh and he has God. like counterfeit clothes. And he really did have counterfeit clothes though. But he didn't have any <laughs> but drugs like fake, then. like Louis Vuitton and stuff? Like oh, yeah, all that kind of stuff. I was like fake Louis, everything. Just all, everything was fake. But he was like, sell them off. It was fine. But, um, and then we didn't have much money too. So that was one way for us to get money, you know? And then another way to get money too is my mom would take me out and we'd steal stuff. <laughs> Cause we like, just didn't wait, have Like any what? Like a little five finger discount? Just go in and like take like well, at like a, at the, I can't think of what the, what the, what is the like um, shoppers, not the shoppers drug market, like Rite Aid there. Oh, like a pharmacy, like boots. Yeah, boots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Dude. basically, we would go, we'll go into the, we would go into like grocery stores and I would eat going around there. So my mom didn't have to pay too much for groceries. And then we would go into, so birthdays were coming up and stuff like that. And like, we just didn't have the money to do anything, you know, and my family was so sweet, by the way, like they tried their best to always be, you know, not steal, but sometimes it got down to it and we just had to. And well, so Peter to there pay was this, Paul. Oh yeah. We went into a uh, Primark, which is one of the cheapest places in England to buy clothes, right? It's very cheap. And so it's, it's literally like going into like Walmart to buy clothes or whatever. Like I'm trying to think of like- Or like a uh, Zellers or a Kmart, something like that. Exactly. Just yeah. super, just super cheap clothes. Like there's a pair of jeans you can get for, for five or like five pounds. Mm -hmm. You know, it was just whatever. But my mom was like, okay, like we need to get these jeans for, um, I think it was like my sister or something like that. I can't remember what it was, but she was like, okay, they're not going to look at you. So go up that escalator. And then as you come back down again, just put it in the bag. And I'm just like, got it done and done. <laughs> got it. So I like go up there and I was not like, I was not like quiet about it until I was just like, <laughs> <laughs> put it in my bag, you know, right in front of like the security guard. And my mom's way of like getting away with it because we literally walked out fine and then they come up like, come on ladies, like let's be real here. And I was like about 11, 10 or 11, like I was very young, right? And they took us up to the office in there and they were just like, listen, we, we have to like call the cops about this or we can just ban you from Primark for the rest of your life, which I'm pretty sure I'm still banned from <laughs> Primark at this point. But uh, my mom just broke down in tears and was like, she always does this. I'm so sorry. And I'm like, are you 
get him in my head. I'm just like, what? You know, but uh, yeah. But the bus, because you couldn't be arrested for it. Like my kid's a klepto, sorry. (gasps) Sorry, she's just picking up stuff. She thinks she's funny, you know. Mm -hmm. I was just like, are you kidding me? Um, But yeah, like- I end up getting banned from there, which I'm, I'm hoping they don't still have my my ten year old face plastered. I hope they do. <laughs> I want like emo <laughs> Raya with the side part, hair in the face. Well, well, back then I didn't have my emo hair. That was when I got to about fifteen. Okay, but I had like really bright hair. I just looked like such a little baby, and I I was obviously, but I was like, how could you, ma? But I understood because I'm she was like she's working smart, you know. Yeah, she's working smart. I was like nice. Now I'm like nice. Yeah. No, your yeah. mom knows what's up. Your mom's an oh, absolute sure. gem. The relationship oh, you have with your mom, or just like your family in general, I mean, you guys are like tight. Oh my you gosh, yeah, so we're close. so close. So no, close. I just actually got off the phone with my brother just now because it's my nephew Caden's birthday and then his baby is due tomorrow. Oh. So, and then my my other brother Roy's daughter's birthday is also tomorrow. So like, I just been keeping up with them right now. And then my mom and dad are also Twitch streaming, which is really yeah. helped them because- with the pandemic and stuff like that, like my family and my brothers and everyone is struggling, but they won't take money off me, even if I like offer it, you know, yeah. like I, I, I give them a little bit here and there, but they're still like too proud to like do stuff like that. So they're always trying to figure out ways to get it. So I was like, well, why don't you just start like a Twitch? I was like, it could really help the wrestling business and stuff like that. And you can have so much fun with it. Yeah. Like people like will love you guys just being on there. And I'm like, even if people don't sub to you, you'll just have such a good time on there that you'll want to keep doing it. Totally. Because It'll just it, be fun for them to like, give them something to do, something to look forward to. And yeah. Just to, and they, it's a way it. to interact yeah. with people outside of the exactly. house without having exactly. to leave the house. Exactly. And they're killing it. Cause my dad was like super depressed. He's nearly 70. And so he had, he just got his vaccine and stuff like that, but he wasn't allowed out for the longest time. So this has been really nice for him. He was like, he was like, honestly, I just like talking to everyone. He, it was yeah. like, I feel like I, I'm still doing something rather than just sitting on my couch watching footy. Of course. You know? So I was like, that's good. That's good. Get it, dad. Get it, mom. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. Love so what it. was it like for you at such a young age moving to America? You're in Norwich, you're living the life that oh, you just yeah. described. And then you plop down in Orlando. I mean, yes, of course we can see a bunch of how this unfolds on fighting with my family. Uh-huh. either in like the movie but I remember first meeting you at NXT and people are like oh she her family has this documentary out and I remember like watching it in my hotel room and I was like what yeah. it all just like blew my mind it was so yeah. cool to see that and like get like a little background on you because you're one of those people that when people meet you you have this like magnetic energy that you're like, who is this person? I need to know more about this person. That's the same with you. I say the same about you. I was like, I don't think she's disliked by anybody. Like, people <laughs> just love me or hate me. There's like no in between, but everyone just loves Renee for real. Oh God. She's golden egg over there. Yeah. You guys. Uh, <laughs> uh, but so, okay. So you land in, uh, yeah. in America, you're so young and you are kind of deemed right off the bat to be the next big thing in WWE and follow through on doing that. How much pressure was on you? Well, at first I wasn't looked at like that. I mean, they looked at me like, oh, she's different. This could be something really special. But at the time you had like Shaw Guerrero and all these like Audrey Marie and everyone like that who they were like, oh, Vince is going to love these ladies a lot more. You know what I mean? Just because still back then the aesthetic was- The diva. Yeah, it's so nice. even though there was a lot of women that were trying their best to want to wrestle mm-hmm. like when I first got there I was like I have to do a bikini contest like what the f- is that I was <laughs> like what and I just remember being so mad about one day because like we had to buy like a cover and then like unveil ourselves in the ring to like 12 people in the crowd and then there was like literally mostly children there and I was like this is horrifying this is not what I signed up for yeah so it was like so I landed, so let me start from the beginning. I landed and then we have uh, this wonderful woman that, that took care, care of us. She's like one of the owners of um, Shimmer and stuff like that. So I stayed with her for a couple of weeks and she got me like, she helped me with my bank account and my social security so I can get paid. Like I didn't have any money. My family tried to give me as much as they, ha- they could. They gave me like a hundred pounds, but to like live, I needed more. So then I asked yeah. my friend, Steve from England. He's one of my bestest friends. Um, he, him and his wife will come out and visit me sometimes actually still to this day, which is really awesome. Um, but he gave me like 2000 pounds as well. Damn. He was like, take this. And he helped me with it. So I was like, oh my gosh, like this is helping me so much. So I managed to get it, managed to get like an apartment and stuff like that. But actually going into the, uh, the facility at the time, wasn't like the performance center. 
It was like a small, like little building, yeah. you know, and it had like the performance center ha now has like six or seven rings in it, has like this full gym equipment, has a promo room, has everything. We had to do everything in like one room, you know, and like it was dusty and all that kind of stuff. But the one thing like I was no so nervous about was doing the promo class because it was with Dusty Rhodes too. Rest in peace. We love you, Dusty. I, I love loved, you, Dusty. I loved him so much. Oh my gosh. He was just like... He was one, him and Norman Smiley were the two people that really, really, really believed in me, right? Mm. Um, but I remember Dusty just making me do these promos, man. And he was just like, no, something special is there. Like, we can get it out. But he would put me on the spot all the time, all the time. So he was like, um, That's Paige, like the dreaded there. thing for Dusty to be like, you, baby, get up there. Yeah. And you're like, oh, get up there, baby. And I'm like, okay, well, sure. <laughs> Let me give this a go. Let me give this a whirl, right? So the, like the first day of me doing the promo, he does this to me. And the first promo I did was kind of similar to the movie. And then he was like, yeah, it's not bad, but sit down. It could be better, right? But then he was like, no, nah, go back up there and we're going to do it like this. And he was like, Roman Reigns, who was Liaki at the time. Yeah. He was like, sit next to her. So I was in FCW with all the biggest stars we have now. So you have like Roman, you have Seth Rollins, you have uh, Bray Wyatt and everyone, just like everyone that's, Anyone. I mean, Dean, you don't have to like blatantly leave my husband out. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I did actually mean to. I literally was like, Dean, uh, your hubby. He was, yeah. So we had all the big stars, you know. Um, and so I, I, it was also very intimidating because I didn't know that they were going to be like the biggest stars at the time because sure. they're like little fragile little flower here. And this is before the full horseman came in. I'm telling you, it was literally just me who was like the wrestler there. Everyone else was just like, you had Shaw who was wonderful at promos. Audrey Marie, who was definitely like a diva type. Alicia Fox's sister, who was a diva type. Oh, I forgot um, that Victoria was in there. Or not Victoria. What's her What's her sister's name? Uh, what was her name? I can't remember now what her name was. Um, no, either. But she was there. Anyways. Fox's and, sister. Actually, Audrey, yeah. Audrey Marie, uh, Audrey Marie, uh, Eva Lee was actually there, and she was a wrestler, actually. Um, but that was it. Oh, and Summer Rae, of course. Right. But that was that was the click. That was all the women that were there. Like, and we had this tiny little friggin' locker room with only like one toilet in it, and just like it was really, really small. Like no shower. Or the shower was, but it didn't work. It was it was crazy. Um, but yeah, so Roman, he was like, Roman, sit next to her, Oliaki, sit next to her. And he was like, don't say a word. All right, Paige, baby, this is what you're going to do. He broke up with you and stole your toaster. Go. And I'm like, what? And I was just like, <laughs> I was so embarrassed. And then I had to like, look at him and just like do this promo. And it was just like so bad. And then the pr promo in the next week, he was just like, okay, baby, here he is again. Liaki, go up there, baby. And then he was like, you're going to do another one. He was like, what do you say this time? He was just like, uh, pretend you're reading a love letter. Oh my God. I want to see all the emotion in your face, baby. And I'm like, ah, no. I'm so I to like pretend to read like a love letter. And I was like, oh, this is so embarrassing. So yeah, like that kind of stuff would, happen all the time. And then this one time, which I tell people this story all the time, when he was like, uh, this was like years into it when we just moved to the PC. <clears throat> and um, he was like, okay, Paige, baby. Like he wanted me to do all these promos, but he wanted me to be, be mysterious and not say very much. And I was like, that's so The raven head. I always yeah. think of like William Regal. Yeah. <laughs> I was just watching some old things and he, I can't stop saying crushed walnuts. Like it's weird. He was saying that about Caitlin's legs. He was like, she has legs that can crush walnuts. And I was like, what the f Regal's um, the best. He's so funny, dude. The shit he comes out with. But um, uh, yeah, so I had to do it and I was just not in the mood for it today. I just really wasn't. So like I did this promo and he was like, baby, I ask you for chicken and you, uh, I ask you for chicken dinner and you give me chicken and I was like, oh, you mother I jump up and like storm off and like go upstairs to the locker room. And then he comes up there and he knocks on the door and he's like, is my porcelain princess in here? And I was just like, yes, Dusty, what do you need? You know? <laughs> and he just, he just like sat down. He's like, first of all, nobody calls me a mother, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and I was like, you're right. I'm really sorry. And he just went on to just say like, he knows like I could be something really special, but I have to try every single promo to the class. He was like, even if it's annoying or whatever, you have to keep trying but he was always like literally my biggest support ever. And he was just like, baby, you're going to be the biggest star of all these mother <laughs> <laughs> I was like, thanks, Dusty. And it was just, it just, he always made me feel good. But so that was always like a big shock. I know I went on like this long thing from- No, I love, I, I like, love a good Dusty story. Yeah. The oh, no, 
Norman too, like everyone got to go to, like, so I was only there for uh, obviously a couple months. I got there January, 2012, like literally January 1st, 2012 is when I arrived in America, went the next day and um, WrestleMania come in a couple months later. And like, I was the only one that wasn't gonna go out of all the girls. Obviously, was that when, that was when it was in time. Miami, right? Miami, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and and I was just like, oh, okay. And then I remember um, Norman ended up calling me like a couple of days later and he was so sweet. And he was like, honestly, I'm gonna be honest with you. I thought you coming from the Indies, I thought you thought your wasn't gonna stink. <laughs> but he was like, but he, he was like, you're a good person and you're willing to learn, you're willing to start from scratch. So I wanna ask you if you wanna come to WrestleMania and stuff. So I was like, oh, yay, of course. and. He's one of the best trainers ever. Like I look back on some of my old wrestling matches because I'll watch them on my on my Twitch. And I'm like, holy I knew so much technically and thank God for my family, but also I learned so much from Norman mm -hmm. because he's just a genius in the ring and he helped me so much. Him and psychology wise from Joey Mercury, just yeah. like combined, those two are absolute geniuses. I miss Joey. Me too, dude. He was Me like, too. I feel like he was like that, like producer that everyone really loved to work with. He was just like so revered for his mind. Yeah, yeah. so and smart. I, I remember like after we stopped doing the bikini uh, contest, so I was just so so good. I was like, I don't want to do this. This is so ridiculous. Like I don't want to do this. And then we ended up stopping doing it. And then we started having serious matches in FCW. Like we were doing like money the bank matches. We were having so much fun. And and he would. Uh, produce it and they would come out so good and just like everything was just so technically like wonderful and the psychology was so good I would get so excited working with Joey so much how okay so you look at everything that's kind of happened I mean from you know talking about being at FCW to NXT being the first ever NXT women's champion to winning the Divas championship on your debut the Monday after Wrestlemania to you breaking your neck and yeah. having to have neck surgery what goes through your mind when you see guys like like Edge, Daniel Bryan, Christian? I mean, Christian and Daniel Bryan, different scenarios, of course. But to yeah. see these guys now get medically cleared, uh, I mean, I know you've been tweeting about that a little bit of like, damn, like what is That's what, like, what does that do for you? Dude, first of all, I just want to talk about for just for one second, the, the day that I won the NXT Women's Championship for the first time, I was actually cleared that day to wrestle. Like I nearly missed it because I had a dermoid cyst in my ovary that I had to have surgery to, to remove. And then like literally a couple of weeks later, we're just like, we have to get this. And Hunter like literally cleared me that day. He was just like, listen, if you can do this, 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 the doctor says it's okay, then yes, you can wrestle. If not, we can't let you do this. And I was like, oh my God, I nearly missed that opportunity. Can you imagine if I who did, would if have, I wasn't Who clear? would have won it? I, I mean, yeah, like it, that. It would have been Emma, probably. It would have been Emma, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was like, I, I was so thankful that the doctor was like, yeah, she's good to go. But yes, yeah, so that's wild, first of all, that I nearly missed Crazy. that opportunity. Um, but also, yeah, it, it feels really good to see especially Edge come back because we do have very similar injuries and him and Beth Phoenix have both reached out to me, which I would love if I ever to come back to face Beth Phoenix. I feel like she would just, first of all, make me look a million dollars, but she would protect me at all costs. For sure. You know, and I've never been in the ring with her before. So I feel like if anyone, anyone, even though I love, I love the Bellas, I love the Four Horsewomen, I love, I love all these ladies. I'm just like so in awe of what Beth can do that I feel like she would be, she would just take me to a, like the next level. And then I won't have to take as many bumps because she'll protect me the whole time. But, um, <laughs> it is like, once I saw it, especially I got chills when I saw uh, Brian and Edge like talking to each other, like backstage and stuff. I was like, damn, that's so inspiring. Yeah. Like it makes me feel good. And like, I haven't had any issues with my neck right now. Like sometimes I'll wake up and it's like funny, you know, it feels weird, but that'll go away, but I'm still like, now I'm going to get, I will get my neck checked really soon just to see the progress of it. And hopefully it looks good. I'm not saying in any way, shape or form that they're going to clear me to come back. It's literally just a checkup, but I am intrigued to know like how my neck has progressed for sure. Yeah. Cause it feels good. And it, honestly, it actually scares me as well to maybe come back to wrestling. Cause I really, I want to, and I would, I would come back tomorrow, but I'm always going to have in the back of my head, like, what if something sure. happens and I do get paralyzed? So like, it does scare me. Like, so I know I'm not going to be fully ready mentally to come back. Yeah. But like, watch out world. Cause when I am mentally ready to come back, everyone's in trouble. Hell yeah. Do <laughs> yeah. you still, I mean, looking at everything you've been able to do in the past 
you know, several years of you not being active in the ring and you've now been able to yeah. build this other empire for yourself and you stay so busy. I mean, the things that you just kind of alluded to that we can't actually fully talk about these other projects yeah. that you're working on to being on Twitch and making that such a popular thing for yourself. You've got a makeup line, a clothing line. You've done so much. Do you still in your heart just uh, do you identify as a wrestler still? I still do. It feels weird saying that I don't wrestle anymore, even to this day. And I haven't wrestled in over two years. Like I think three years that it's crazy. Time flies do, but yeah, I still, I still call myself a wrestler, even though I know I'm not, but I, I was born into wrestling. So I'm always going to yeah. have that. I it's always like in your like DNA. I'm, yeah. Like literally like the movie said, like hepatitis, like we're wrestlers. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like that can't just go, that can't just go away. Like you know, you see like old school wrestlers like still coming back. Like you, you, you just can't get wrestling out of your mind, out of your body, out of anything. Like mm -hmm. wrestling is life. Once you become a wrestler, that's it. You sold your soul to the devil, my friend. Like you're done. You're done. You're finished. Um, what do you, what do you want to do still outside of wrestling? I mean, you, I know that you've kind of listed off some of the things, but I mean, you're so young. You've got so much stuff ahead of you. What else do you want to accomplish? Cause I feel like you're that person that like, you're like, this is what I want to do. And it just happens. Like you eventually happen. Yeah. Yeah. I'm one of those people that like to, I don't like giving up on something so easily. Like, I feel like the first time I had my neck surgery and then all that kind of bad was happening. I, I, that was the first time I've ever hit rock bottom and kind of gave up. And then I was just like, that's not me whatsoever. I never give up. Like when I was wrestling in the UK, I would travel by myself all over the all over Europe, all, like to America, all by myself all the time. I was mm. just like, no way. Like, I'm gonna get to WWE, like whether like you know I die before or not. Like, I will get to WWE, and I've just always had that mindset. And so, you know, with the projects that I'm working on now, I'm like in my head, I'm like, no, this is gonna happen. This is one thousand percent gonna happen. And I know my dad's always brought me up, like, don't get your hopes up and stuff. I'm not getting my hopes up. I'm just, I'm just telling myself like this is gonna this, this, this is gonna happen there like, and I have finding to have that ways to do it because even if something exactly happened the first way it's like all right let's go knock on another door and let's try to make yeah it i didn't get signed connection. straight away yeah right. i didn't get signed straight away and i i changed a few things and came back and tried again you know what i mean like yeah. so i i always i've always had that mind, mindset where like okay i um I didn't do it this time. Okay, let's switch up and try and figure out different avenues to get get to where, where we want to go. But yeah, well, like we, I, I want to continue to do stuff. Like I want to have a reality show, like kind of like the Osbournes and stuff like that, because we're like very, you don't get a lot of like alternative kind of looking like reality shows anymore. It's all strictly just like all women just bickering with each other or something like that. Or you do have some family looking, you know, hijinks going on. Like, oh, you, like, you know, like Ms. and Mrs. is kind of like a family kind of thing. But I want to have a reality show and it's be like, you know, Ronnie and I obviously at the center of it, but just to show a woman as especially, like just have the drive and passion to do certain things as well. And then having no filter whatsoever. Yes. Like I feel like my whole house is always a circus at all times. And I just feel like that being on the like camera would just be hilarious. But that, and then I also still want to do acting. I still want to do hosting, anything that involves you know, being in front of the camera because I feel like I can flourish by doing that. Totally. But working behind the scenes too, like doing certain things, like it, it is, is going to feel good as well. So. Is it hard to sort of reestablish yourself outside of wrestling? It's like wrestling yeah. gives you this like incredible jumping off point. You have this yeah. insane built in fan base. You're known as being a wrestler. People gravitate towards you. But then when you're like, hey, here's this other thing I want to do. Maybe I want to write on this project or maybe I want to act in something. Is it hard to get people to see you in a different light other than being Paige the wrestler? So now, like, that's what I've kind of been trying to do is having people call me Soraya more so than anything. Yeah. Not because I, I don't want to be part of WWE. I do. WWE has gave me such a wonderful platform. Um, you know, they gave me this platform. I've took it and I've kind of run with it. You know, because a lot of people are given a platform, but they don't know what to do with it, mm -hmm. right? And then they they kind of don't, they still don't build the fan base that they should have. Um, but no, I've, I've worked really hard on on the platform that WWE gave me. And fortunate enough, like people still follow me on my other ventures that I have. So when it comes to Twitch or if it comes to projects that I'm working on, I know I have such a wonderful fan base that they'll support me in anything that I do. And I'm making new fans every day, which is wonderful as well. Like new people come in that doesn't even know about Toa Divas or wrestling. They just see me on Twitch and they're coming yeah. in and they're just like, we just love, like, I love your <laughs> Twitch stream. Like, what do you do? You know? And I'm like, well, you know, so I'm a wrestler. 
yeah like i'm a wrestler but kind of retired wrestler but still work in wwe like it's kind of like a weird thing to talk about but <laughs> Yeah. Uh, looking at what your fan base is, and you do have such an insane, loyal, great fan base, but there can be the bad sides that come with that. Oh, for yeah. instance, you having a stalker for a while. Oh, how yeah. Dude, crazy was that? First of all, this is how the internet is so backwards sometimes. Like I called out this girl who was pretending to be a minor, but she's not. She's actually in her twenties, but she wanted the internet to think that she was a child. And I was yelling at her. She like was selling the address that like our address that we had to people on the internet and so like we were getting people at our house we we had i was getting flowers sent to my house constantly which i'd end up telling the florist like please stop bringing these to my house yeah like i don't want them here so i don't know if they're still coming but like i like it was creepy little messages too i think i sent them to you before yeah anyway like this guy turns up at the house and he's not like i open it and he's not wearing any i don't usually open the door for anyone but i was expecting the wi-fi guy to come so that's why i open the door usually like i look at my phone to see who's at my front door or whatever but uh luckily ronnie was in the house too who was downstairs on his stream and the guy walks up got no shoes on whatsoever his shirt's like torn and then he's just like staring at me dude like staring into my soul and he's for and i'm like do you, do you need something like what like what was happening here and he was just like the symbols brought me to you. All these signs and symbols led me to you right now. And I was just like, I don't think they did, bro. And I was just like, I was, I was like, you need to leave. Like you, you can't be at my house right now. And he was like, no, 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 but I need to because of the symbols. They told me I need to be with you. And I was like, what? And then I text Ronnie like on my phone. I'm just like this while he's like looking at me being like, come upstairs right now, you know? And Ronnie comes bolting up the stairs throws the door all the way open, right? Lobster, who's usually like the most passive, like sweet little dog. His, he was like frothing at the mouth. Oh, dogs know when shit is not right. Dogs yeah. know. Oh, one that, Lobster doesn't do that a lot. That was like the second time in like the years that I've had him that he was like full on aggressive mode. And I had to like try and keep him back. Like it's very difficult. He's a 90 pound pit bull, you know? But Ronnie chases this guy. This guy turns around, starts bolting up the stairs. Ronnie chased him all the way to his car. The guy jumps in the car and Ronnie's like grabbing him, like pulling him out the car. He's like, you're not going anywhere, mother You cannot come to this house. And then he was like, he was like, I'm so sorry. I shouldn't have come. Like he was like apologizing, but he was just like, what the f were you thinking? He was like, so he told me like, call the cops real quick. So I call the cops and then they come straight away because the, the police officers around the area actually are wrestling fans, which is wonderful. Great. So, and they're like just around the corner, like not even a mile around the corner. They're right there. So they came like instantly within minutes and um, they end up taking the guy. But since he didn't do anything wrong, luckily he was driving on a suspended license. So that's the only way they could arrest him. Okay. But they were just like, he didn't do anything to you. So we can't really do very much. But what they are doing now is they come around our house all the time, like just okay. circling it. Which there was another time, which I told you about, right? With that, when they came into our house. Yes. The armed police. Dude. So we just moved in, right? And then we're trying to figure out the alarm system. The alarm goes off when he's like with the alarm, as you do, you know, he's and then he finally manages to turn it off. And then uh, we're like, okay, well, let's go to, uh, you know, Whole Foods, let's go get some food and stuff. So we get in the car, start driving. And then the neighbors who, uh, super invasive by the way, but the neighbors, they end up texting uh, Ronnie being like, hey, there's like cops at your house right now. And we're like, oh my God, lobster. Right, we're freaking out because he's a pit bull. Like they have guns. Yeah, like you yeah. get scared about that kind of oh. stuff, you know? Yeah. So I, like our heart sank, and luckily we didn't get very far because again they're like a couple of minutes down the street, so they got to our house quickly. But we turn around, come back. I run down the stairs. I run in the front door, and then they're just like freeze, and they're like inside the house with guns pointed at me, and I'm just like, listen, I was like, this is my house. Like this is my house. This is my house. <laughs> So I'm just like, no, for real. I was like, and there's luckily a paint and a Ronnie and I and, and Willow and Lobster up on the wall behind me. But I was like, no, this is mine. This is, and they were just like, oh, okay. Like, no worries. Like, this is fine. He was, he was like, we were just responding because the alarm was going off and it was for a while because Ronnie didn't know how to turn the thing off. <laughs> so we ended up like, I was like, literally, this is why we need a reality show because yes. only this kind of shit happens to us all the time the all crazy the time. like you always have the craziest stories oh wait i've always texted renee you guys i don't text a lot of people but i'm always like renee <laughs> listen to this this just happened and she's like what the hell is happening over there it's insane but, but i mean yeah. this has literally been the thread throughout your life like crazy oh, <laughs> just happens to you it just it gravitates i'm like well, did i do something in a previous life that really pissed a few people off or something it's like so I crazy it's yeah, so I was like, what's going um the house that you guys 
as living looks absolutely beautiful. Yeah. I've I seen the whole, like you gave me the whole interior uh, run through when you guys moved in, but now you're becoming a swimmer in the backyard. Dude, so being British, right? I know you do learn how to swim in school. That is it. But like when I was doing like the 50 meters lap that we have to do to pass swim class, every time she would look, I would put my feet down on the ground because I was so scared of water. I've always been terrified of water, deep water, because I'm like, I'm going to drown. This is it. Like, this is my life. I'm going to die here. But, and I've never really had an experience where I nearly drowned. So I don't even know where that came from. But just um, deep rooted, seated fear. Dude, yeah, and Ronnie's like, you need to learn how to swim because God, God forbid you fall in there and people think I murdered you. You know, <laughs> that's his first instinct. He's like, people are gonna think I murdered you. That would be you a hell something. of a Netflix documentary, though. Hey, watch out, Dateline. You know, but he was just like, no, seriously, we need to teach how to swim because if I'm not here and you do fall in, like, he was like, I'm gonna like worry. And I, I was on my Twitch yesterday, and I was like, people were just like, okay, if we get to like this sub goal, can, can you cannonball into the pool? And I was like, sure. I'm a, I've been a swimmer for a day. I've got this. This is fine. <laughs> Ronnie comes into my chat. Like he, he was like at the studio, but he comes in and he was like, don't go in the pool. He was like freaking out. And he was like calling me. I was like, I'm not going to jump in the pool. He was just like, don't scare me like that. He was like, I'm not there. Like if you jump in, like that's it. And he was so protective. It's so That's cute though. Scary. But I, was, I feel that yeah. way about blue, but I can't yeah. teach my dog to swim because he's a bulldog. It just, he's not, he's not equipped to do it, but oh, I think about I that all the time. Fine. Yeah. And now having a, fine. and now having a baby on the way, I think, oh, about that, yeah, like, oh my yeah. God. And I've got to put up like a fence around the pool. Like these things that you think about, cause like drowning ain't no joke. Oh no, dude. I swallowed a little bit of water a couple of days ago and I thought I was going to literally like pass away. I was like, goodbye old. Like, but Ronnie's like, are you okay? And I'm like, ee, ee, yeah. Ee. <laughs> I was like, this is fine. Yeah. I was like, oh my God, rest in peace me. But, um, I was good though. I took, I did a really good job, but lobster is, uh, scared of water too so he doesn't even come near it so i have nothing to worry about he could probably swim though i bet you he would throw yeah. him in the water he would do good throw him in there i'm like good luck you <laughs> know um okay so my last question to you is very important yeah. okay do you remember specifically the first time that you watched the movie labyrinth oh my gosh <laughs> i was very very young because like that that is the movie that my mom brought me up on and i that's one of my favorite movies of all time and if me you too. Not, i think i got you a labyrinth onesie for yes. the baby yeah Dude. i got the toby onesie too uh, you got me too like, you got me like babe with the power i think it says babe with the power so like a bowie yeah. one and then the, the and then toby the toby onesie. striped one yeah dude i was i can't remember the first time i watched it but like i watched it so 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 much it was just it's the most amazing movie of all time. And if you haven't watched it, like, get your together. David Bowie's in there. Hell, hell of a freaking uh, cup. You know oh, my mean? God, right? Like, I sure. think that was the most infamous thing about the movie. I was just like, what is that to my mom? My mom was just like, you'll figure it out later. And it was a lot of, like, up shots because he's, like, dancing with the Muppet gremlins that are, it's like, weird. knee high. So it's a lot of, yeah. like, Bowie d shots yeah it's so strange and i was just like i i never understood when i was younger but now i'm like why was there so many shots of it like why was that so like why was that so important to the story of the movie that they 80s, had to do so many like shots? 80s bowie and jim henson just like making absolute magic yeah <laughs> i wanted to be sarah so badly and i wanted to hang out with the worm so badly me too me too dude oh I mean, she was the prettiest girl i ever saw when i was younger too and i was like yes. i want to look just like her when i'm older you and know those what I mean? brows oh my oh, god oh hell, hell of a set of brows she had on her hair was fantastic yeah absolutely Clothes. i wanted to have the baggy shirt and the freaking like yes. washed out jeans dude i was like give them to me i can rock those that whole outfit would actually totally work today by the thousand percent one thousand percent wait do i need to be here for halloween with my baby dressed as toby <gasps> oh my god and then john can be david bowie you just get oh him like the little mullet oh my god spectacular yes. that needs yes. to happen yes That's please amazing. do that what a yeah. great movie great soundtrack all of it if you've not seen labyrinth oh, yeah. treat yourself though i it's will say it's one of those things if you didn't grow up on it and didn't watch it as a kid and then you watch it as an adult you're like mm, i don't know but that's true. Same with Rocky nostalgia. Horror, because I'm a big Rocky Horror fan. Right. I'm like, if they watch it now, I don't know whether they would be, they would like it. Yeah. You like it make sure time. your baby grows up on Labyrinth. <laughs> oh, that's the one thing I'm like so psyched about being a mom for is like pushing all of my favorite things onto my kid. Like, you have to like them. Oh, 
And also you can show them like all, like now it's old school Disney movies, but the movie, the Disney movies we grew up on, I, I was like always saying that. I was like, when I have a kid, like the kid is going to be like watching the old school because they need to learn how to be sad. Agreed. You need to learn how to be heartbroken because these Disney movies will f your f life up. I'm not Agreed. sorry for cussing so much, but I'm like, what was Disney thinking? Why are you trying to torture us? But you know what? We grew up to be a little more hard headed than Gen Z. Let's be real here. Yes. And I agree. It's funny because John always gives me for this. Like, you love sad movies. I'm like, yeah, sometimes I just want to feel a little sad for a bit. And like, I like a little emotional roller coaster in my films. I'm all about it. Oh my God. The only thing I can't watch again is Never in the Story. I just yeah. like, I loved it, but I'm like, I can't watch it as an adult because the whole horse thing, I'm just like, there was a rumor that there was a real horse and it actually died. Then they were like, no, it's not. And I was like, I just can't put myself in that position again. You know? It's tough. That's like, I remember yeah. watching Marley and me on a flight and oh. like, full sobbing like i mean i was probably several wines deep at this point too so i was like the wine yeah. yeah it makes you cry because you know what they trick you because you don't think it's going to be a sad movie by dog if you look at the commercial the the whatever for it you're just like the trailer you're like this is such a heartwarming movie and then like halfway through you're completely scarred and then you're just like are you kidding me like i cry my eyes out and I don't think you expect Owen Wilson to do you that dirty emotionally. You think Owen Wilson's like oh, just yeah. in there for a good laugh. And you're like, what? Comedic the actor, right? Dying. Yeah. Oh, heart. 1000%. Which yeah. actually, the actor who I was really surprised about is Adam Sandler in Uncut Gems. Because he's yes. like, I was like, wow, dude. I didn't realize he had like, he, he, I always loved his movies because they were always fun, funny and heartwarming and stuff like that. But like him is like a serious like actor like, i was like oh my god you're a genius like you are wonderful yeah mm. uh well listen i'm glad that i got to have you on the show uh, finally we finally. could talk for hours and hours um but i feel like we had a good little chat i love we it. did look we at did. you just rising up just like you're literally blooming into like this fantastic woman just before our very thank eyes you. thank you it is a solid filter that's making me look very glowy right now because you know i was like i can't show my true form just yet like i look very bun wait you have a filter <laughs> no. on right now yeah i have a little <gasps> filter. so let, let me let me tell you a little uh cheat sheet for you from what Please, you're doing this for right the love of god so, so download um snap cam okay that's it you download Snapcam, you connect it to like I, I literally have it up on, on here right now. And then you can just have a sm like a little smooth filter. So you know, you don't have to I put it on all the time. I'm like, no one's gonna see my true form right now. This you is fine. little I know. I do you can see like little specks sometimes. Like this filter isn't as disguising as the ones I usually use. But yeah, get Snapcam, give it a little download. You don't have to doubt you don't have to like sign into your Snapchat or anything. Yeah. It's just Snapcam and they give you all the filters. Oh my god, I'm using that yeah. because yeah, I mean trying to put on like makeup and really pull your shit together while you're at home is like it's a task. Makeup. Yeah, dude. I look at myself in the mirror in real life and I'm like, holy shit. and then I put the filter on, I'm like, I'm fine. This is good. I feel like I'll be like, I look fine, this is good, and then I'll watch it back. I'm like, where no 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 no. you'll like you'll like it i watch it back i'll watch my streams back and i'm like okay maybe go a little uh you know like some filters can be a little crazy sure you know but you know just a subtle smoothness is fine yes a little smoothness maybe a little rouge just like yeah, smooth yeah, yeah. Me out yeah, smooth yeah, yeah. me out and thin me out is there a thinning one because i was oh, like yeah that there is days. like i look like a psychopath though i put it on and it was like let me, let me <laughs> just try just full out. skeletor oh let's see it yeah hang on oh no my staff can't <laughs> <laughs> now it froze, so never mind. Mwah, mwah. Well, Damn hey, it. at least we finished the interview, so. Oh, there we go. Oh, so, there so this she is. is like the natural one. Like, there's some crazy ones, though. You're like, what is happening here? Oh, okay. Wait. Oh, look at that, like, tan it gave you. Okay. That one's a little too crazy. Like, too crazy. I, I sometimes put on there just to, like, have a good time, you know? <laughs> like, we love a good baby filter. Oh, my God. Look at you. This one's a little smoother, but I like, there is some really cool ones, though, for real. This is fantastic. Really smooth. Yeah, that is one that is. Yeah, I'm I'm gonna download that because go for it. We if you're working from home, that's the move. Yeah. Make everyone think that that's just what I look like. You're like, I look fantastic. I am a pro. Right. Yeah. I've not yeah. had Botox in over a year. I need that. Give me all the filters. Oh, Hook of a good job. Botox too. There is no. I mean, there is a little movement, but I was so frozen. It's the best. I have yeah. full movement and I have for the past seven months. I'm ready to be I beamed hate, up. No I, hate that for you. <laughs> I hate that for you. Pray for me. <laughs> All right. I'll let you get back to your life and get back to the pool and start swimming those laps. Yes. Because it's what I, you need in your life. Yeah. I have to go. I have to make some food for Ronnie and I too. 
Oh yeah, go cook so, up some stuff, get your vegan meals happening. And I yes. cannot wait for you to finally share all this other information with the world when you can. So everybody hold on to your asses. Yes. yes. Thanks right. you guys. Thanks buddy.